Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be continuing our brace frame design series with part two, looking at the connection design of a diagonally braced uh, frame. So let's do a quick recap of part one. Uh, right, We had a brace frame structure with the uh, HSS 4x4 four by, four by quarter braces. We had a lateral load of 125 kips, which resulted in a uh, ultimate brace force of 85 kips. So part two, right, we're going to be looking at the upper left-hand corner brace, which would also apply to both sides there. Um, and we're going to be utilizing the uniform force method from AISC. So quick recap on the uniform force method. Um, right, You can find more information on this in the manual, uh, part 13, I believe it is. Um, but it is a methodology to determine forces at the beam gusset and column gusset interfaces for diagonally brace connections. Um, you you know, if you're designing it from scratch, you'd ideally select geometry that does not produce moments on the connection interfaces. Now, obviously, that is not always possible, um, but this is the sort of ideal situation if you can. And then you calculate the horizontal and vertical components at each interface. So basically, really what it does is it translates that axial force in the brace um, into basically X and Y components along the column uh, weld and then X and Y components along the brace weld to make the welds easier to design. So for the force method, uniform force method, for our connection, right, we are going to be checking the following things. The brace to gusset weld, right, that should be pretty straightforward. We'll check the gusset plate in tension. We'll also check the gusset plate in buckling, right, on that, uh, that Whitmore section there. Um, our gusset to beam weld, our gusset to column weld, right, and that should basically recap uh, the entire connection or give us all the, the different capacities of that connection. Right, some assumptions that we want to make sure we just kind of lay out here. Um, these terms, alpha, alpha bar, beta, and beta bar, right, we can, you know, we can dive deep into this. We have another video on this information if you want to take a deeper dive into the uniform force method. Um, but basically, alpha and beta are the gusset connection centroids, right, where the moment is zero at the interfaces. And then alpha bar and beta bar are the actual physical gusset connection centroids. So that's going to be basically the length of weld divided by two along the column and beam. And the difference between alpha bar and alpha would be any moment, or beta bar and beta would be any moment on those connections. So let's take a look at our problem statement, right? We uh, have a brace force of plus or minus 85 kips. Uh, our angle from the vertical, so from the column, is 49.4 degrees. Um, our uh, half the distance of the beam, right, is just going to be our beam depth over 2, um, which is 9.1 inches, and our half column depth is 7 inches. And then our alpha bar, right, we can define that now because uh, we've already defined the size of our gusset plate, um, and that's going to be just the length of the weld over 2, so it's LX over 2, which is just going to equal 7 inches. Um, and then as part of our sort of assumptions, we're just going to assume that beta equals beta bar. Um, that way we don't have any moments induced on the column weld. Um, there's more information about, you know, how to s or why we set beta equal beta bar and that sort of thing. Um, we have a detailed video on the uniform force method. And again, these you know dimensions can change a lot um, depending on your design so there is a little bit of iteration that re it is required um, you know trying to find the, the perfect solution but we're going to start with these dimensions um, and see where we land so let's go ahead and open up a calc book and we'll get started on the design all right we've got calc book open now so we go ahead and click into our steel design module uh, we can select the 15th or the 16th edition we'll go ahead and use the 15th for this calculation uh, click into our connection designs. We're going to toggle over to welded um, and then click on welded gusset and click continue. So we'll get that loaded up and then we can start to enter in some information on the left side here. So we've got uh, the direction of our uh, brace force. Now ours is, is back and forth, right? It's cyclical because it's earthquakes. So we have uh, both tension and compression. Um, so we just enter it one time and it will check both uh, tension and compression on the gusset plate. Our brace width, we're going to leave at 4 inches. Uh, our gusset to uh, brace to gusset weld length, we can also leave it at 8 inches. Um, our weld leg size, we'll just leave there as well. We can come back and adjust these as needed. Um, our angle between the brace and the column, we said, was 49.4 degrees. And it's going to constantly check the geometry of the connection to make sure it works. And so we just need to keep going through and entering our inputs, um, and this will update accordingly. Uh, we'll leave the, the gusset thickness at one half inch. That's fine. Um, our length to gusset rate we said is going to be 14 inches. That's the horizontal length between the gusset and the beam. Um, our half depth of the beam we said was 9.1 inches. And then our column is 7 inches, or the half depth of the column. Okay, so it looks like it's cleared up all the geometry issues. 
Uh, we don't need to touch anything else here. We can go up and go to our demand, which is going to be a seismic load of 85 kips. And we told it to check both tension and compression. So it will check um, the buckling capacity of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the gusset as well as tension. Okay, so we've got all of our information here. We can do a quick check here of some of the things, right? We have our, our length of weld 8 inches that we said, our 14s will be inputted, and then it calculated LY, right? The, that vertical distance that the gusset is connected to the column, uh, which is 9.5 inches, and that matches our, our drawing, so we're good there. And then the rest of the items that we entered in as well. So uh, we, I think everything here matches what our inputs are. So we can go ahead and calculate uh, our our brace snare, which is just going to be the load combination. So it's just 85 kips because it's 1.0 earthquake. And then we need to start doing the detailed sort of geometry and manipulation to get our components, um, our component forces on the beam and the column weld. So we start with the beam weld, right? And we define our beta bar, which is that LY. This is the physical distance, right? So half of that weld length is 4.75 inches, right? So this is upside down on in our case but you get the idea there half the half the distance there and then we made the assumption up front that beta equals beta bar so we don't have any moment there and then we can solve for the uh, alpha right not alpha bar because alpha bar we already defined as our lx over 2 so we solve for alpha we get 9.16 inches and then we get our alpha bar which we calculated in our in our uh, in the problem statement right of lx over 2 from all that information, right, we can get the distance from the gusset connection to the centroid working point, which is down here, right, and that's 21.29 inches, and that's used uh, to determine uh, basically the, the components on the connections. Right from there, we can now calculate each of the components. So uh, on the beam here, we have a vertical force of 36.34 kips. We have a horizontal force of 36.58 kips. Um, we do have a moment, right, because our alpha and alpha bar do not match, right? So we have an eccentricity there between those two. So we do have a moment of 78.54 kip inch. And then from that, we are going to just convert those uh, those forces to uh, unit shear lengths, right? So, excuse me, shear per unit length. Um, so we just take the, the force that we found and then we divide it by two times our weld length because we have a weld on both sides of the gusset plate. Um, and so we get our unit shear demands uh, for each of those uh, directions. From that, we can calculate what our maximum shear per unit length is, which is 2.82 kips per inch. We can move on to the column weld, right? We've already done a lot of the geometry up front, so we can just go ahead and directly calculate the uh, forces based on our geometry calculations in the, in the beam section. So we get a, a vertical force of about 19 kips, horizontal force of 28 kips and then again we convert those to unit shears and we get a maximum shear per unit length uh, on the column uh, weld. Okay so from there we can start to calculate our capacities. So we have our brace to gusset connection right so we just have a simple uh, fillet weld calculation here. Plenty of capacity 180 kips right so we could probably shorten that up a little bit but that's going to mess with our geometry so we'll just leave it there for now. Um, we have our block shear, right? So the, the gusset plate in tension. We can calculate our block shear capacity based on that. And then since we wanted to check uh, buckling as well, right, it's going to calculate what the unbraced lengths are. So, right, it calculates that width more width first based on that 30 degree um, dimension. And then it calculates L1, L2, and L3, which is the distances to the brace points or the braced points of the gusset and figure out, figures out the effective buckling length, right? And we have ours tucked up pretty tight there against the, um, against the, the column. So the, our buckling length is pretty small. Um, and then we get our radius of gyration, effective slenderness, right? Which is, it's a pretty short length. So I think we'll have plenty of capacity here. We go through our buckling calculation, right? We have 215 kips of buckling capacity, so no issue there. And then we do uh, two more fillet weld calculations, right, for the capacity of the column to gusset connection and the capacity of the beam to gusset connection, right? In both cases, we have uh, uh, plenty of capacity. So our, our design is controlled by the beam weld, right, between the gusset and the beam, and we have a DC ratio of 0.51. So uh, plenty of capacity. We could optimize this a little bit more, um, and we could probably shrink the weld sizes down or maybe shrink our gusset size down, uh, but it's a, it's a pretty big iterative process because that starts to change the geometry. So for now, we're going to leave that as is um, in working condition. 
Um, we hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we do have part three coming where we're going to do the foundation design for this brace frame. So please stay tuned for that. If you have suggestions uh, for other videos or other designs you want to see, please let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time.